Today I'm behind the wheel of a brand new 2020 Hyundai Sonata. And for this model year, the Sonata has been completely redesigned. Now Hyundai is once again serious about the midsize sedan segment. Back in 2012, the Sonata topped out in sales around 200 thousand units and since then it has been slowly declining declining in 2019 it was pretty abysmal around 83 84 thousand units so for this model year honda went all out it's bigger more stylish more comfortable more technology more features starting with the outside the new sonata looks very different from previous generations and in fact from all the other sedans in this segment Hyundai to me went with the luxurious premium elegant look versus Toyota and Honda, which made the Camry and Accord more sports sedan look. So they're, they're very different in my opinion. Starting from the front, you see nothing but grill and headlights. That's it. It is a gigantic grill. In terms of grill to bumper ratio, this is probably the largest in the industry, bigger than a Toyota Avalon. But take a look at those headlights. The shape is unique. It's not very stylish in my opinion, but what is very distinctive is how the daytime running lights, they flow into a chrome trim piece that goes above. And the two just kind of blend together. And that is very distinctive. Now, moving on to the side of the Sonata, it looks good. It has a unique round shape, matches the front and rear really well, but it doesn't have a sports sedan look like the Camry which has a lower roof, it has a two-tone color, and also the wheels are bigger. Wheels are 19 inch on the Camry and also the Cord for the top models. But on this Sonata Limited, you only have 18 inch wheels. Like I said, I think Hyundai is going with a luxury look rather than a sports sedan look. Now moving to the back, this is probably the most unique and polarizing side to the Sonata starting with those unique looking LED taillights and how they flow into the ducktail spoiler. It's, it's integrated and you can see that it has a really cool effect. I do like how this looks. I also like the bottom bumper, how that's shaped. Also some fins on the bottom and also you have unique dual chrome exhaust on one side. Unfortunately, it's not on both sides but it does look unique. So the Sonata looks really different from previous generations. It just depends on if this is the right look for you or not. Trunk, no surprises. It's nice and big. There's no cubby holes or storage spaces, but you can fold the seats down for more cargo room. You know how in SUVs, there's a hands-free setup? You have that in Sonata. You don't really see that with sedans. All you have to do is stand close to the trunk for about three seconds and it automatically opens. That is really cool and really convenient. Now moving to the inside, I love it. I love the way the inside looks. I love this two-tone setup. The seats are covered, of course, in tan leather. They feel really good, and I love the contrast between that and the gray doors. Now, in terms of size, I'm five feet 10, and I have a good three to four inches of leg room and about the same in headroom. So in terms of leg room in the second row, this is about average, but it does pale to the Honda Accord, which has six inches more leg room in the second row. Now the rear passengers do get a pair of vents, one USB port to share, and a couple of cup holders. That's about it. Now up front in this cabin, everything, everything looks good. It's a very luxurious look. And in my opinion, this is definitely class leading in terms of just overall looks and even quality. Starting with this infotainment screen, just take a look at how that doesn't just pop out. Some manufacturers are lazy and just make a screen pop out. This actually has curvature to it and it actually flows in with the rest of the design in here. Really nice. And I like the use of aluminum on top, on the bottom. And I love the two-tone setup also with the tan and the gray. However, not everything is leather though. You could tell like the dash and also the armrest, it's more like synthetic leather. It doesn't feel as nice as the seat leather. So there are some places that Hyundai did cheapen a little bit. And also like places like this is also hard plastic. So although this is really nice, there are still some little places that Hyundai did skimp out on. The steering wheel has a unique shape. It's four spoke, but it kind of looks like a two spoke setup and it does feel good. It has the right amount of thickness, 
The leather feels good, it's not slippery, and the overall design just looks good, and the buttons is easy to read, easy to understand. Now on this limited, you get a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, which you can opt for on lower trims, and I love this. In terms of the interface, the brightness, the graphics, everything, this is definitely one of the best ones I've seen. And it's very customizable. In the middle, you could scroll through various things. And also on the right side, you could scroll through various different things too. So you, be, you could adjust it however you want. If you want to see fuel economy or what's going on in the radio or whatever, navigation, you could display that in your face. And I really like that. Also, you get a huge heads up display that is included and is limited. I like it. You could display whatever you want right in front of you, displayed on the windshield. It's not like a pop-out screen or anything. It's nice and bright, and I really like it. Now, moving to the infotainment screen, again, this is one of the best in the industry. It's not the biggest, 10.3 inch. Now, this is standard and limited. On the lower trims, you get eight inch, but both of them are really, really nice. Again, just like the digital gauge cluster, very bright, and you can customize it. There's different paints, and you can configure it however you want. Everything is super responsive. There's no lag. The resolution is extremely high, and I like it. And if you go into settings, there's a ton of things you can customize, from your lights, to your door, to your safety systems. Everything is customizable in here, and that's really nice. And moving down, take a look at the climate control. It just It's simple, and it looks great. It's full of black and aluminum, and it's just really easy to read and understand. You have a few buttons for your defroster, your heated steering wheel, and of course, you do have some buttons for fan and modes, and you have a couple knobs for temperature. That's it, but it looks great. It really does, and so does the vents and everything else in here. Just looks really elegant. And underneath, you have wireless charging, a couple USB ports, and also a 12V outlet. Now, in terms of shifter, you do have push buttons, and I, I gotta say, this implementation is probably the best I've seen. I've seen Honda's implementation, and eh, it just looks so-so, and, it, and it's more complicated than this one. This one is pretty easy to understand, and the way it looks and how it flows with everything else in here, I understand why Honda went this route rather than a regular, regular shifter route. Underneath, you have a few more buttons. You have drive modes you could select, so you have normal or sport. If you go, if you select sport, the whole thing, the whole gauge cluster turns red. <laughs> like like you're about to race or something. And I'll let you guys know how it feels in sport mode versus normal mode, but there is custom too. So you can adjust it however you want. And you do have a 360 view camera in here. I like it. I like it a lot because of this large screen, you get a split mode setup. You can see what's in front of you, what's behind you, 360 view. You could change the views and I really like it. This to me is the best 360 implementation in this class by far. On top, in this limited, you also get a panoramic sunroof, which I like because it lets a lot of light in, but it is kind of confusing because there's only one button to control the whole thing. So if you just want to open the lid, but not the sunroof itself, it takes some time to get used to. And I figured that out after a few minutes of playing around with it. You know, a lot of cars, there's like two switches, one to open just to cover, one to open the sunroof itself. This is one, so you have to figure that out. Now, in terms of safety features, you get everything, everything you can think of. You got front and rear parking sensors and also emergency braking, front and rear, also lane keeping assist, lane foul assist, highway assist, uh, rear, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring. So basically, any safety system you can think of, you get it in here. Now, the one big question mark and what a lot of reviewers are questioning is the engine options in the Sonata. So there's two. The base engine is a 2.5 liter, four cylinder, natural aspirated, pushing 191 horsepower at about 181 pound feet of torque, which is respectable for this class. However, on the higher trims, like this Limited, you get a different engine, a 1.6 liter turbo four cylinder, and get this, the horsepower output is only 180. Now, the pound-feet of torque goes up to 195. But the horsepower went down by 11 versus the lower engine. I haven't seen where optional engine actually puts out less horsepower 
than the base engine. And you look at this output of 180 horsepower and you compare that to a Camry XSE, which has over 300 horsepower, uh, or a Honda Accord with a two liter turbo engine that's pushing 250 horsepower, that's where you could see how this is really lacking compared to those two segment leaders. And when you accelerate, you could definitely tell there's a big difference between this and the class leaders, the Camry and the Accord. And also what's bad about this turbo engine versus the base engine is the fuel economy is actually worse, slightly worse than a base engine. So the, this, this optional engine, this 1.6 turbo engine isn't bad, but it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It, it doesn't. Outside of acceleration, just driving around town, I do feel like this engine is adequate. Although this eight speed tends to shift up pretty quickly. So around town, when you're going around 40 miles per hour, you'll notice that it feels a little bit bogged down because it, it tries to upshift to eight really quickly to try to maximize fuel economy. So there are times like right now, I'm traveling 38 miles per hour and I feel like there's not a whole lot of power. I have to really stomp on it to make a downshift to get some power back. So unfortunately, you do notice that in this Sonata. And it's unfortunate because when I reviewed the Hyundai Palisade, I know it's a different vehicle, but that utilizing that 3.8 liter engine with the eight speed automatic, I felt like the throttle in that drive was perfect, as perfect as it can be. It never felt underpowered, everything felt smooth, and it was diesel and quick. I loved it. I wish, I wish Hyundai would consider putting that 3.8 liter into the Sonata and pair it to this eight speed because that would definitely, definitely change the drive a whole lot. Now, what about everything else? Well, inside the cabin it is very quiet. It's a quiet ride. I like that slight, slight road noise, but overall no wind noise and it's very quiet in here, so I like that. Um, the seats are very comfortable. These seats, they look nice. Of course, they're leather, but they feel nice too. You have heated seats, ventilated seats. Those are standard on this Limited. And overall, I feel like this is hugging me in. Normally with leather seats, I have a tendency to, to kind of you know slide around. Not so much in this. The bolstering is nice, it's holding me in. And overall, I think these seats are very good. Driving position and visibility is also good. Nice big windshield, I can see well over the hood, no problems with that. Also side windows, nice and big. The mirrors are a little bit small to me. They're just a tad too small for my taste, but I think for most people it'll be okay. Now the rear visibility is also good. Now the rear window is very raked, so it is a little bit smaller than what I'm used to, but overall you can still see back there. The blind spot is also good, and uh, even though you get blind spot monitor and and with this digital gauge cluster, there is a camera that shows you what's in your blind spot on both sides. It's really nice. You gotta get used to it, but you have to look down. But with that and blind spot monitoring, um, and you have a little quarter window over there, blind spot is really, really good in here. As for suspension, Suspension is good too. It's in line with, I'd say, others in this class. Maybe a little bit softer, because again, I feel like Hyundai is going with more of a luxurious ride and feel and look. So it does feel very comfortable around town. It's soaking up these bumps quite nicely. And overall, it's just a very comfortable ride in here. The steering is okay. It's not the most precise. There is some play like this. I don't feel it much. So there's some play. It feels okay. It doesn't feel too artificial. It does feel a little bit light in my book, but overall, I think a lot of you guys will enjoy the steering feel. And the steering wheel itself actually feels really good too. Now, I mentioned drive modes, right? So I've been driving a normal, so I'm gonna put it in sport now. So my whole gauge cluster, everything turned red. I think it's overkill. Yeah, so in sport mode, it's doing what I thought it would do. 
it's holding the revs much higher in every gear like right now it should be downshifting and it's not um so it is holding the revs higher and i do feel like acceleration was a little bit livelier i don't know if that, that's just in my head but it did feel a little bit more lively now what about this lane keep assist because i've been hearing a lot about it i have tested it in the hyundai palisade and i thought it was a great setup and i think it's going to be great in here too there is actually a dedicated button right on your steering wheel so all you have to do is press it and it enables it so this is really good for for long drives on the highway um, it's not really meant for local driving but let's test it all right so i just enabled it and we're taking a, a curve right here no hands yeah so that can <laughs> that, that just went horribly wrong so it works if it can read the lines but if it can't read the lines you're gonna have to pay attention and take control there is something called highway assist in here where where this Hyundai Sonata is going to utilize basically the lane keeping assist the the dynamic radar guided cruise control and the navigation and basically it'll, it'll adjust the speed for you so not only does it drive and keep you within the lanes and keep you within a certain distance and speed but it'll adjust the speed based on the speed listed in GPS so if you're in an area that's, I don't know, 70 miles per hour and all of a sudden it drops to 60, it'll know and it'll drop the speed for you. So that's really, really cool. Now, of course, the big feature that some of you guys may have seen is the ability for this Sonata to move forward and backwards out of parking spots using the key fob. Now, no other car in this class or even in luxury cars outside of Tesla can do this how you enable it is first of all do a remote start and then you have to be close to the car basically on the key fob there's two buttons one for forward one for backwards and you hold it and that's it you keep holding it and you'll see the car move forward and backward So it's a cool little trick that looks gimmicky, but I can see how it can be useful. Now, as for pricing, this is where it's really good for the Sonata as well. Now, this one that I'm driving is a limited. It's the upper trim and everything is included. There's basically no optional packages and it starts right over $33,000. So that's good because if you compare that to a Camry XSE with a V6 engine, that's 2,000 more. That's over 35,000. And the Honda Accord Touring with the two liter turbo engine, that starts over $36,000. So if you're looking at pricing, this is basically 2,000 less than a fully loaded Camry and 3,000 less than a fully loaded Accord. Honda obviously priced this very aggressively to try to catch up with the, with the leaders of this class. Next, let me sum up the good and bad to this brand new Sonata. Starting with the good, it has a polarizing and fresh exterior look. It has a very high quality interior cabin. There's a good amount of interior space and trunk space. You have comfortable seats, comfortable steering and ride. There's a fantastic digital gauge cluster and infotainment screen. And finally, Sonata is loaded with features and technology. As for the bad, the exterior is not for everyone. The optional 1.6 liter turbo engine is a head scratcher. And finally, the Sonata is not as lively as some of the others in this segment. Overall, I'm giving the brand new 2020 Hyundai Sonata Limited a score of 98. And if you wanna see how it compares with others in this class, check out driversonlyrankings.com. Thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe to the channel for more reviews, first looks, and news. 